Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about leased lines. A leased line is a dedicated physical connection between two locations. It has fixed reserved bandwidth, which is not shared with anyone else. And the same bandwidth is available in both directions. So if you've got a leased line, which is being used for your internet connection, and it's a two meg leased line, you've got two meg going up to the internet and you've got two meg coming down as well. That's different than some other options like some versions of DSL. The company may own the cable infrastructure themselves, but far more commonly, it's going to be leased from a service provider for a monthly fee. That's where we get the name leased line from. With our leased lines, the first location is typically a corporate office. And the second location is typically either another corporate office, and that provides point-to-point -point connectivity between the two offices. Or it could be going to a data center that's connected to the company's existing WAN. That provides multi-point connectivity between offices. Or it could be going to a data center that's connected to the internet, providing internet connectivity and optionally corporate office connectivity using internet VPN. The data center we're talking about here is a data center at the service provider. So an example of a leased line, this is one you saw earlier. We've got our office in New York and an office in Boston, and we put in a point-to-point -point leased line between those two offices. Let's say that our servers are in New York our users in both New York and Boston can now access those servers over a private network connection. We're also going to want to have internet connectivity as well. So for example, in New York, we put a leased line going out to the internet from there. Our users in New York can access the internet from there. And also our users in Boston, they could send their traffic over the leased line to New York and then break out to the internet from there. Some other topology options that we have. We could put in a leased line going out to the internet in New York and also a leased line going out to the internet in Boston. That gives us internet connectivity from both sites. And then we could configure a VPN tunnel that's going over the internet that gives us connectivity between both sites as well. So in that example, we're using the same leased line for both our internet and our Office WAN connectivity as well. Another way that we could do it similar to the last one is where we have a leased line going out to the internet in New York and Boston. And we also put in a leased line directly between New York and Boston as well. Now, obviously we've got one extra leased line here. So this is gonna be a more expensive option. The reason we would do this is that we don't want the corporate traffic between New York and Boston going over an internet VPN. We want it going over a direct leased line. That way we're going to get an SLA for the traffic between the offices. We're going to get guaranteed uptime and also delay and loss. We wouldn't get that if we were sending the traffic over the internet. So our leased lines use a serial connection requiring the correct physical interface card in the router. They don't use an ethernet port. Now, like I said at the start of this section, different service providers will use different terminology. So another service provider may offer you a leased line, which is not actually using a serial connection. But as far as Cisco are concerned for the CCNA exam, leased lines is direct point-to-point -point connections using a serial port. Common bandwidth options for our leased lines. It depends whether you are in North America or in Europe or another part of the world. In North America, we've got the T1, which is 1.544, so one and a half megabits per second. 
In Europe, we use an E1, which is 2 megabits per second. Now, whichever country you're in, it's highly unlikely that you would have the option of a T1 or an E1. If you're in North America, you can get a T1. You can't get an E1. If you're in Europe or Australia, for example, you can get an E1. If you're in another continent like Asia, it depends what country you're in, whether the service provider is going to offer T1s or E1s there. We can also get higher bandwidth connections as well. For example, a T2 is 6 megabits per second and E2 is 8 megabits per second. There's also even higher bandwidths as well, the T3 and the T4 and the E3 and the E4. Further back in the past, we would get slower bandwidth connections like this, like 64K or 128 kilobits per second, 256 or 512, etc. So lots of different options for the bandwidth on your leased lines. Obviously, the higher the bandwidth, the more expensive it's going to be. Now, there's benefits and drawbacks with our leased lines. Big benefit is that they have fixed reserve bandwidth for you. It's not shared with anyone else. And because of this, that means that the service provider can give you a service level agreement with guarantees for uptime and traffic delay and loss on the link. But you have to pay for that kind of service. So leased lines are typically more expensive than the other options. There can also often be a longer lead time to wait for the installation. So because of that extra cost, copper or fiber ethernet connectivity options down to your cpe that's the customer premise equipment are becoming more common than serial leased lines are you can still get these but less expensive options are often being used now satellite connections share the same characteristics as our cabled leased lines so that's why i'm mentioning them also in this lecture they are typically expensive and lower bandwidth. So why would you use a satellite connection? Often it's the only option if you're in a hard to reach area. Like if you're working in mining or oil and gas and you want to put in a WAN connection on an oil rig, satellite is normally going to be your only option there. There's one last thing that I want to tell you about here that you don't actually need to know for this CCNA exam but I'm going to include it so that you don't get confused when you're working on real world deployments. And that is that T1 and E1 links were also commonly used for connections to the phone network. That's the PSTN, the public switch telephone network. Just like you connect to from your phone at home, if you still have one, or from your cell phone. Now, the analog phone cable to your house is capable of carrying only one call. But if a company connects a T1 or an E1 to the phone network, they're going to be able to carry much more than just one call over that single cable. If they've got a T1, it's a digital line, it can carry 24 concurrent calls, an E1 can carry 30 calls. So this is good for the company. They don't have so many cables going into the building. Also, it can come with additional phone services as well. So back in the day, you would very often see T1 and E1s being used for a company's connection to the phone network. Nowadays, VoIP, voice over IP, using SIP, the session initiation protocol, over an Ethernet WAN connection to the telco is more popular. So E1 and T1 used to be super popular. It's being replaced by SIP connections, usually going down to an Ethernet interface at the company though. So looking if we are using T1 or E1 going out to the phone network, we've got the same example company again with an office in New York and in Boston. Looking at the office in New York on the router there, they've got three different T1 interfaces. One of the interfaces is connected out to the internet. Another one is a direct connection to the office in Boston. And then the third connection is connected to the phone network. So now if that company, if they make a phone call, say we've got a user with an IP phone in their desk in New York, 
and they call Boston, that call will go over the T1 direct link between the two offices. It's better to do it that way than sending it over to the PSDN because then the company doesn't have to pay toll charges. But the company, they're not going to be just calling between their own internal users. They need to be able to call suppliers and customers on the outside as well. So if I'm in New York and I phone a customer anywhere outside the company, then the call is going to go via my router, but then out the T1 to the phone network to get to that customer. Okay, that's everything that I needed to tell you about T1s, E1s, and the other bandwidths we can have with our leased lines for now. I will see you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.